Now, I'm going to show you the video of this alleged statement as well. About six years ago, um, you can see an image at the bottom by a channel called True Hebrews. And it's just showing you an image. And we're going to go through some of these images that were purportedly found in Russia. We're going to look at them. So here is an image that was found in Russia. Here's an image that's been made by AI. There's some fake people are using, as we're going to go through this presentation and find out, don't get triggered. People are using and falsifying information to harness a certain narrative. So we know people say Maccabees, they change their image into their likeness and stuff like that. So here you see a man and he's looking at the images that were found in Russia. And this is a, a few years ago. I'll blow it up so you can see. Even if you blacken that, whiten that, if you look at the phenotypical traits, you'll see Eurocentricism. But let's continue a little bit more though. Let's allow all of that. Let's look at what was actually found in Rome. Icons dating back to the Let's go back six years ago. Together from private collections across Russia. It's very beautiful. It gives you goose pimples. It's a remarkable exhibition. It's an exhibition which feeds the senses. Everything is so grey outside at the moment. And here suddenly it's a feast for the eyes. And it's a feast that marks 100 years since religious icons started to be recognised as works of art. Before then, they were mainly viewed as religious objects, often left blackened over the centuries by the passage of time and added layers of paint. <laughs> centuries by the passage. Before then, they were mainly viewed. You have the facial features. Oh yeah, he's dark. He's black. Anything that's brown or loose to being brown is black, right? What is black? We never define it. It's very loose. But anyway, this is what was found. This is one of the images. Let's continue. Religious objects, often left blackened over the centuries by the passage of time and added layers of paint. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming beauty. To All right, so here's some more images that were found. So there's Mary, I'm assuming, and there's um, Jesus, I'm assuming. Let's continue a little bit more an extent that it shocked Andre Matisse, who was in Moscow at the time. He said, it's here that artists should come to learn to paint, not to Italy. But today, only a small number of these masterpieces remain. Most were destroyed during the Soviet era. Well, I'm going to show you by the end of this presentation, people are falsifying information and running with black and white sensationalism and getting people not to really use their senses. Their senses are gone. Sensibilities have gone. Just give me black. Black? Did I hear black? Gone. These icons are the survivors. If museums hadn't saved them, they wouldn't exist today. There are 50,000 icons in Russian museums. Before, there were millions. Interesting. I really encourage people to look at the Chris Welsing video that we did looking into the term semi and what it actually means. There you see, uh, I guess that's Miriam. I guess that's Jesus or Yahushua. Yeah? Cool. So there were people of color, POC. People of color, semi, mixed race, mulatto, it's the same thing. You should look into it. Don't get triggered. We're going to go somewhere though. Because people are saying, when people are saying black, people are inserting and assuming a lot behind this term, black. And people are insert and assume a lot behind this term white, black and white. Yeah. So these are the these are some of the icons that the Vatican released a couple of years ago that they got from Russia. We're going to see some more. We're also going to look at this video that's doing the rounds where Vlad is apparently saying this, that, and the other. And I think, in my opinion, which is not a fact, I think it's a deep fake. So I'm going to show you a video of Vladimir in Ukraine sharing an uh, 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 image of Christ, which he has from, he took from a, a monastery or a church or whatever you want to call it, yeah? And you're going to see the details of what he's showing, all right? So we does show an image, all right? We're going to see this image again, though, in a book. 
and we're going to analyze the detail of the face. Because it's, it's too easy to say black, white, yellow, orange, all these pseudo terms. He didn't declare anything at this time. He wasn't declaring anything. He was just there at a summit. Then he goes around shaking people's hands and then he leaves. So this, I've seen this. This is original. This isn't fabricated. This isn't, isn't a deep fake. Yeah, this is legit. You can find this on the Daily Mail. So that's that. There's no conversation about blackness, whiteness. That's not even a talking point. It's just opening up a thing, a gift that was given to him from a church. That's that. No talking about anything. Now I'm going to show you, uh, I think this is 15 years ago in Russia, the idols and the icons that they revere. And the Borodino battle, no three, which was present. This is the Tikvin icon. All right, so I want you to see, it's the same image that Putin put up. Vis-a-vis, -vis, one's a bit darker, one's a bit lighter. Yeah? If you was to lighten that same image, that's the image you would get there. We're going to see the same image in a book. Don't go anywhere. Don't get emotional. Don't get triggered, get delivered. Don't eat up the... Don't drink the Kool-Aid too much, man. Yeah? We, there's no need to use falsehood to substantiate things. Like, let's stop trying to tweak things to certain agendas. Let's just make truth be truth, right? Now, that same image there is the same one that you saw Vladimir put up a minute ago. Notice the woman's holding two. There's a flag. And then she's holding the picture. And the picture, you'll see here. We're going to see this when we look at a book in a minute. Yeah, I'll make it slow so you can see. All right, cool. Sebastopol battle and the Borodino battle. Many Russian insurgents and Russian generals who went to fight and defend the Russian land have... Again, whether it, whether it be dark, light, whatever you want to call it, yeah? Look at the features. This is, this is, these are the images that they, were, they revere in Russia. Remember, in Catholicism and Orthodox Christianity, they take out the commandment where it says, don't have idols. That, that commandment's thrown away. So idolatry is rough in these places because that commandment was taken out. So you see a lot of idols. You see a lot of black and white Madonnas interchangeably. When I say black and white, things that have this tone or a lighter tone, but it's the same phenotypical, phenotypical features. It's the same features. Now, let's look at these images then. Let's analyze them. Because these are what is worshipped in Russia. And this is what the hype is about, that Russia have said this and that and the other. But let's have a look at these images then. So there's Mary. Okay, there is Jesus, or Yahushua, or Messiah, or Christ. There's Jesus. So he looks very interesting to me. I want you to take a look at this book. We're going to see some fraud take place in a minute. I want you to take a look at this book or some AI fraud that's going on. People are using a lot of AI, and people can't even differentiate between fact and fiction anymore. You see people like this when you go to Egypt today that look par for par like this today this is interesting this guy looks like I don't know some Bulgarian boy but dark and then this woman again you were just looking at I don't even know what people are looking at tone and then here's an image of Jesus again woolly hair or curly hair so indeed there were not European, but there weren't this or that. There's a lot of admixtures you will see. Now, check out this video. I don't know if this video is a fake. Yeah, but check it out nevertheless. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revelation. A moment that redefines Todos not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportion, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. 
they are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Even if this video is legit, or if it, even if it is fake, yes, it is true that the people of the book were POC, people of color. Yeah? But even that is a very loose label. All right, then the people were, or were black. Absolutely. But even that is a loose term and definition. This video here, Russian icons on display for the first time in Rome, is what we looked at earlier. You know, when I paused it on certain features. Now look. People will see that now and say, look, black. And they're probably, they're probably linking. I don't know how people are linking this black word because it's very loose. But if you want to go for a definition, yeah, black. But what are we talking about now? I just want you to think, man. Just think a little bit. Think, think. Look at what you're seeing. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding. Yo, big up. I don't know if, bro, so somebody's saying that this video is fake. Yeah, man. Anytime I see something go viral, yeah, and it's just based on black and white sound bites. Like I said to you, man, there's a massive exodus of people leaving church, Christianity, Hebrewanity, and just leaving it, just in, in general. They're just going back to um, the roots in terms of going back to primitive expectations of going to houses and just mingling with people and doing it that way, organically. Everyone's leaving this, this fraud that's done in the name of the Lord. They're leaving it all. So what a better way to get people back into the pews by saying, let's gather together, nation not desired, use certain scriptures out of context, pull it into a black matrix and then say, look, we have to come back to blackness. We have to come back to blackness, blackness. Or like they've been doing for centuries, we have to go back to whiteness. We have to come back to whiteness by using white icons, white icons, black icons. They use interchangeably to get people back into the church. White Jesus, that gravitates white people back into church. Black Jesus gravitates black people back into church. But these same churches are run by a mason to keep you divided on black and white. Acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of black Jesus. A figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion and brotherhood. So he said black G. I, I, this video just seems so deep. Have you seen a lot of these deep fakes that are going around? Where you got a uh, president saying certain things and all kinds of stuff. Now, if, the, if this guy wasn't saying stuff in our favor, would we be circulating it? No. Because he is saying things in our favor, even though it's fake, people want to circulate. I, I'm 80% convinced that this is a fake video. There's been loads of them. This black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of Black Jesus. A nation that stands for justice. See, why would he, even if this was real, why would you keep saying a nation that reflects Black Jesus and Black Jesus? Like, it just seems too fake for me, bro. <laughs> it just seems fake, man. But you know what? When people are emotionally invested, they will run with it, innit? All I'm saying is, we don't need fake to tell the truth, man. 
You don't need fake to tell the truth, man. And this, in my opinion, appears very, very fake. But I'm just getting people to see, man, there's a bigger agenda outside of the black and white paradigm that we get fed all the time. There's a bigger agenda outside of that. And a lot of it's just social division and politics and technology. A lot of tricks are involved. A lot of people that run these churches are messianic and demonic. And they like to bait white people and black people in various forms for various purposes. But at the top of that organization is the people you're not allowed to talk about. This equality and love for all, regardless of race or creed. I knew something that I, none of us really know. But I wanted to say this. Jesus. So when I was taking Russian in college, my professor was from a family who had been evicted from Russia because they were basically tied in with the Tsar at the time. And so they were living in the United States. And he told me about the politics that they shared. He made two interesting predictions to me back in the early 80s. The first prediction was that software engineers would be the new aristocracy in the country. The second prediction he made was that at some point the United States would be more like Russia and Russia would be more like the United States and that in this country we would have a racial civil war. Now, with this announcement timed the way it is, while I think it's great and I think it's cool what, what Putin is doing because, you know, hey, being inclusive is awesome, but it also makes me wonder if this guy knew something that I none of us really know. But I wanted to say this, right? Ask yourself, why is Putin showing this now? Like, why is Putin, show, Putin showing this now? I believe that, of course, during these end times, the Most High, Jesus Christ, is revealing his truth. But also, I remember watching the movie Never Leave the World Behind. And basically, one of the points in there is, if you want to touch a country without touching a country, cause chaos in the midst of it, and they'll fight themselves. I believe he showed this, one of his intentions to show this was to start a civil war. Because my people, my colored people, my people, my colored people. Listen out to these buzzwords that people use. It sounds good on the surface. Yeah, I think she's right in terms of if this is a legit video, then one of the reasons would be racial agitation, race baiting, to do all the time. It drives people to go to church, whether white or black. If it's a white narrative, like Donald Trump being a, a prophet or uh, Donald Trump being the next Cyrus, then white people go to church. If it's a black thing, then black people go to church. It's a white thing. White people, it's just the same politics. And I think the main culprit, though, know, is church, bruv. <laughs> it is, man. Because it's run by the people, them, to make the people stupid, yeah? But then she's going to talk about my people of colour. See, it's always linked to colour and colour and colour, bruv. And then also, the pride in my generation, once they start finding out and it start clicking in their minds, like, oh, you lied to us. And that our true saviour was actually this colour. Bet. These folks, they going to... Look, it's going to... They're going to butt heads. Not, not black people against black people, but it's going to be black people against other races that's what i believe i believe a civil war is going to start out and break out i'm not prophesying it's going to break out in america and i think that's what Putin, putin's doing i think he's you know what they've been prophesying a race war hebrew um uh israelites in particularly since year 2000 they've been prophesying this thing they're actually in position to agitate that if you go and look at some of the old videos they were prophesying the race war 2000 going to be destroyed by nuclear destruction. There's been a lot of false prophecies, you know, and, and it's been a lot of false baiting. I call it prophecy bait. There's race bait, there's prophecy bait. The prophecy bait gets people to go to church, you know, and the race bait gets people to go to um, civic services and lodges and stuff like that. So they're always trying to bait people into a certain way of thinking. But it's never on righteousness. It's always on color and color this and color that. Copper color this and copper color that. And the reason the chart's in the corner is because this video was put out, I think, by GMS. So the video that you just saw there, then it's going to go into talking about this part by GMS. Um, so just interesting. Yahweh is the name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the Well, it is to be fulfilled in the world. And if we go to... Yeah, America is going to have a civil war. And everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. <laughs> and the spirit of Egypt shall fell in the midst thereof. So all this 
God save America. America this. America's the land of the brave and the free. The American dream is going to fail. <laughs> so again, this prophecy of it, this civil war, this civil war rhetoric has been around for a minute. That the, the, the agitation of the nations with this uh, civil war rhetoric, you know, that this has been part of Hebrew, this is like Hebrew deism, Hebrew 180 fundamentals to push the civil war to agitate nations into this. You'll, you'll be surprised how deep the proverbial rabbit hole goes, you know, but it's not really that deep. They make it out like it's deep, but it's not really that deep. Because all these people run the churches and the churches are run by a certain people and the certain people f filter the information in a certain way for their advantage. That's all it is. When you, when you peel back the onion, that's all it is. And racism is one of the tools they use because it's highly profitable, highly chargeable, and it's easy to distract people on race. But let's continue a little bit more. Let's look at this video now. So here are some of the images uh, from these icons. In Russia, there are a few other more icons from Russia. Remember that image we saw them holding up? So there's the image there. The image that we saw earlier. One uh, Vladimir had in the, in the golden catchment. Then we saw the protesters with kind of a fairer complexion of it, but it's the same image, but just a lighter tone of that image. Now you see back in the tone that it should be. So there's the image. Okay. Black, whatever that means. We need to define what these things mean, man. It's too superficial. All right, cool. So then, it's the same image there. And then when we see the other video, so it's the same image. It's the same image. All right, this one's a little bit light, but you can see where it was dark at the bottom and it's just over time bleached out. Yeah, but it's the same, it's, a, it's the same image, bro. Same everything, bro. <laughs> oh, man. And this is what I'm saying, how they, they, they hoodwink a lot of people, man. With just blatant, like, stupidity. Yeah, and it's always, no disrespect, it's always our people at the front of this, like, site operations that take place, yeah? Because we just like to hear black all the time, man. Time, bro, and use our eyes, our sensibilities, our common senses. Now, this guy's amazed, maybe, because you can see a bit of tint on it. I don't know what's going on, you know. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I give up sometimes, you know. Look, man, it's the same sort of thing, bro. Like, what are we talking about, man? What are we talking about, man? Ah, stop it, stop it. All right, let's continue. So, now this is this is accurate. This is actually um, uh, Perpetua and Velicitus or Velicity. Now, these were martyrs. These were like the first alleged... Well, I'm only saying alleged because I don't know if they were the first first, but these are the first recorded martyrs for following the Messiah. And they were thrown into um, a... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, to the lions or, you know, to the gladiators. Yeah? And there you have Perpetua, where you get the word perpetual from, perpetual, perpetua. And she was from the region, if my memory serves me right, North Africa, Carthage, like Tunisia. So you can see she's not white. What is white though? These are new terms. I hate them because they don't make sense. But she's Tunisian. That's her ethnicity. And then she had a slave or a servant called Velicitus. And these two were both martyred for the faith. Black and white there, martyred for the faith. Yeah, if we're going to use these pseudo terms, black and white. And they were both ma martyred or killed for the faith, yeah? And you can see the, um, the images. Quite clear and consistent. One has a straight nose, one has a bit of a curve towards the bottom of the bridge. But either, either way, I'm just trying to show you there are images that are accurately depicted, but then there's some that are Eurocentric, or if there's even some that are Asian, like Chinese eccentric and stuff like that. There's so many different images where people have cast the images in their own imagination after their own populace. There's 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 Chinese Jesuses, there's black Jesuses, yeah, there's white Jesuses. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is this Russian thing that's circulating now, in my opinion, which is not a fact, seems to be some fake site operation that Negroes are just drinking up like it's Kool-Aid, and then on the flip side, 
the white people are getting triggered and black people are getting triggered and everyone's getting triggered and it's sold into this narrative of agitation which is a messianic false flag in my opinion so the video we saw earlier was from GMS Babylon is falling yeah again and then they've inserted the pictures into his speech when the pictures weren't a part of the speech then he has somebody called Tree Hebrews, Russian icons of true biblical Israelites. And then it's an AI generated image of someone who looks like Kanye West. But then when you actually go into the video, there's no images of anything that looks like that in the Russian icon book, which we're going to look at in a second. This is Russian icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov. I hope I didn't butcher that name, but um, this is a book that is highly. So on the front cover, I think this is supposed to be John the Baptist. So there's John the Baptist on the front cover of this Russian icon, icon book. And admittedly, it was put up by a channel called Black Authentic Truth, where, yes, history has been distorted. Certain characters have been lied about. Certain things are distorted and, and, and have been used for political and to propagate certain viewpoints. But at the same point now, we need to be careful that we're not doing the same thing and, and trying to blacken everything or whiten everything. We shouldn't be trying to use deceptive practices to put a narrative across, whether it be black or white, yellow or orange, like forget the color, forget that. It has to be truth, it has to be righteousness. If we're using underhanded tactics because they did underhanded tactics, then we're no better than they or they are no better than us if we're using the same thing. Envy not the oppressor, choose none of his ways. But yet we're doing the same things and blackenizing everything. Like, that doesn't even make no sense. Or we're whitenizing everything. We need to stop, man. Let history be history for history's sake. In this book, though, Russian Icons, we're going to see a few pages and see what is depicted in these books. There's a terminology, tall, dark and handsome. Now, people think tall, dark and handsome means tall, black and handsome. No, 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 no. Tall, dark and handsome, when it was used back in the day, was to depict someone who was from, not someone who's from, but someone who, less, you know, you got a Swedish Nordic person, your typical Sweden Nordic person, and then you have a so-called Mediterranean person. That's what they used for tall, dark and handsome back in the day. If you didn't know that, now you know that in the European ideal. Now, we're going to see a lot of tall, dark and handsome images in this, in this book. Handsome is debatable. We're going to see tall, dark in this book, right? Called Russian Icons, which is an extortionate amount of money to purchase. But I do like the way that they show that there was a lot of um, admixture. There's a lot of different ethnicities and ethnoses. There was not a white narrative, white centric Jesus thing. Or even a black, totally isolated Jesus thing. There's none of that. Many societies have been interacting and engaging with one another, you know. And this is not to come with some ecumenicism or some kumbaya narrative. This is just to say, yo, stop lying, man. And just tell the truth, man. And stop trying to make something centric that shouldn't be centric. That's why I like Dr. Amos Wilson, you know, he said, he said, our people have a, we need to be careful that we don't start trying to do everything and say this is this and this and this in, in, in the direction of blackness alone. And we'll be, we're, we're telling fairy tales and lies because we've been lied to. Now we want to lie to other people. That isn't, that's not just, bruv. But let's continue. Covered it by different circles. It, because it has the black icons, it has the, um, history of black people in places like Russia but now when you when you just put the black label on it or a white label on it you're doing a disservice because these terms that we're using these terms of endearment are anthropological terms that came very recently and it's very pseudo it doesn't say nothing about nothing in um, Italy in places all over Europe All right, there we see the same image that we saw earlier that Vladimir had, that the people had on their flag, and then you see the same thing here. Now, people will say, look, 
it's black. And I'm like, come on, guys, stuff out of that. Like, let's wake up a little bit, man. Let's have a little bit of common sense. Glory to the most high for that, man. It's, it's the biggest, it's the biggest hypnosis that's ever taken place on the world, you know, is this black and white labeling. Like I said before, when hypnotists hypnotize people, they use a black and white pendulum and swing it back and forth, back and forth. When you look at Masonic um, organizations, it's all about black and white, duality, divide and conquer, good versus evil, black versus white, white versus black. It's a, it's a game of divide, distract and conquer. Yeah? On superficial, nebulous terms. But then when you check the play, there was another woman in the Bible called Jezebel. She was a Canaanite. And she got her king to do things that were harmful to the nation. So you have to see there's been a lot of interplay with different nations of people as it relates to our people. There's been a lot of interchange. There's been a lot of interplay. It hasn't been a one-sided history of people just lived isolated in Negro land and there was no interaction. In fact, Cape Verde is a citadel of West African Negro land monarchs having interplay with Portuguese Canaanites. You have to understand history outside of it being limited to anything that is this is good and anything that, that is that is bad. Because history is a lot more a lot more layer cake than that. It's a lot more layer cake than oh black and white is what I'm trying to get people to overstand and understand by the most size grace. So let's continue, let's advance. They'll give you a light version, a darker version, whatever the preference is. But phenotypically, it's always the same phenotype. This is Russian icons by Father Vladimir. His wife looks like in different high priests. Afros and thick beards. This is an So this is an image of John the Baptist, according to this Russian uh, book. Now people say, oh, he's dark, so he's black. Look at the phenotype. Interesting. You read up on him. You can read up on him and find. And again, when you talk about the Berbers, man, that's another history altogether as well. They were Canaanites. They were an admixed people in North Africa. People think that Africa is just one black cradle of civilization. But the so-called black that many people are referring to is more sub-Saharan or equatorial region. But then on that same tectonic plate of Africa, there's a lot of people that you would quote unquote call white but they're not there's no such thing as this term white but you see people of uh, varying complexions which would be categorized as white in north africa and around north africa and then you'll see people that will be categorized as black back in the day around south italy or southern italy so there's always been this interplay and this interchange between nations you know but for some reason well i know the reason divide and conquer there's been a reason why they've, they've hid histories distorted histories withheld histories from some gave people amplified false histories and if we're not careful we're going to repeat the same history of lying to ourselves and deceiving ourselves because we want some validation let history just be history bro the good the bad the ugly and let's learn from it not to reproduce it so here's the book this was posted, this whole Russian conversation that we're having today has been around for like, this was put up six years ago. Some of the videos I showed you were like 15 years ago where Rome was showing you uh, the Russian icons in the Vatican. This, that was 15 years ago. This, this talking point, this, this story that's circulating is not new. It's just recycled and reintroduced to the next generation that didn't know that it's already been about. You understand? That's why when I saw it come out again, I was like, yeah, this is dumb. This is staged. This is rigged. Yeah? Anyway, so here you have this guy using this image. And then when you click into the video, it's got nothing to do with this image at all. It's just all these images. So you're getting played. Then, I want you to see. So we need to be careful that we're not just doing some fraud and lying to people. So this is the original. And this is the reproduction. And then you have people making these fake videos of a guy talking about every, I think he said black Jesus three times. Now what present, what, what's the motive in saying that? Obviously it's a fake video. And then you have people talking about this video. And if, anytime I see bare people hyping up behind a video and it's going in one particular direction, 
I'm always like, yo, what is going on with this man? And you see the camps, the people that race bait all the time, your, your Hebrew mores and more women and more men, come and just ra race bait these same little tropes. You know? And even if you bleached him or darkened him, it's just, it's not, it's not. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. But anyway, interesting. So that's interesting. We have to go through a lot of disinformation and misinformation to get true history. I agree. And due diligence, 100%. Agreed. I agree. Exactly, people. Have a lovely day. Again, just do due diligence. And if possible, live peaceable with all men. Love the most high with all your heart and soul. And likewise, your neighbor as yourself. Peace.